everyone, my name is Jara. I teach people how to garden and grow food. Today I wanna to give you guys my top 10 favorite crops to grow during fall. I'm even gonna give you the exact name of the cultivars that I recommend because I am a professional seed and plant nursery. So I trial out lots of different varieties of things year after year. And these 10 crops are the ones that I come back to every single fall. So I can't recommend them enough. And by the way, if you're looking for seeds for any of the crops that I'm about to mention, you can find them on my website. All right, so first up we have Pier Asi Cava. This is a sprouting broccoli and it's native to Brazil, so it handles a lot of heat. If you're in the southern parts of the United States where your winters are very warm, it triggers things in the brassica family to go to flower or bolt instead of producing a nice big head of cauliflower or a nice big cabbage. So if you wanna grow something where you don't really have to worry about the whole heading thing and it going to flower, try growing Pier Asi Cava. This is a non-heading type of broccoli. So that means it's gonna form stems that you harvest very similar to rapini or broccoli rob. So that eliminates the whole issue of trying to grow a nice big head of broccoli or something like that. Plus this is the most heat tolerant cultivar of anything broccoli-ish that I have ever grown in my garden. Most of my broccoli and cauliflower plants are done and they start bolting towards the end of February, but this thing usually keeps going until May. So yeah, I can't recommend this enough. This is my absolute favorite broccoli type thing to grow during the fall. On to crop number two. If you're gonna ask me what zucchini I love to grow the best, it's gonna be this one right here. The tromboncino rapicante. Now I know this is not a traditional type of zucchini, but this plant right here is part of the Kirkabite Moscata family. So it has thicker and woodier stems, which means it's more resistant to the squash bugs and the squash vine borer. Plus it produces a lot of very long baseball bat size squashes. And I say squashes because it's not your typical like little market zucchini, but man, is this thing my favorite. Here's one growing right here. I wasn't kidding when I said they're as big as a baseball bat. This one's actually ready to harvest, so I decided to cut it off the vine. Now this is an extremely versatile crop because you can harvest it in two stages. The first stage, if you wanna use it just like you would regular zucchini, harvest it when the skin is light green like this with white streaks. It's a very thin and soft skin. You could cook the whole thing just like you would zucchini. If you leave this on the vine, it will continue maturing. The skin will get harder and it will turn a tan color very similar to butternut squash. At that point, it can be used like a storage or like winter squash. It will actually store for about three months. I actually prefer this over the flavor and texture of regular zucchini. To me, it just has a more buttery flavor and a firmer texture so it doesn't get all white waterlogged or squishy like regular zucchini. So this makes like the best zucchini noodles. And my secret to making really good zucchini noodles is to steam it in a steamer basket. Don't boil it in water. That way it won't absorb all that extra water and get really flimsy and get really soggy. These things are really heavy, so make sure you build a nice solid trellis to support it. I just took a cattle panel and I zip tied it to the T-post. You can grow it on the ground, but it's just gonna vine and sprawl out and then they won't get nice and straight like this. They do have a tendency to curl up. Here in Florida and in many parts of the South, it's really hard to grow spinach because again, it just doesn't like that warm weather and our winters fluctuate a lot. It can get challenging to grow nice big spinach plants, but I have two substitutes that work pretty well. The first one is tat soy. Now this is actually more like a bok choy, so to speak, except the whole thing is green. This cooks like spinach, it chops like spinach. I use it just like I would spinach. I can harvest the tender baby greens to throw in salads or I can cook it up and make like my favorite pasta dishes. Plus it's a very attractive plant in the garden. It grows in a rosette pattern and the leaves are very dark green and shiny. My second recommendation is actually New Zealand spinach. This gets pretty bushy and I really like to harvest the tender baby greens again to use just like I would spinach. Now I know you're going to ask me how does the flavor compare to spinach. Well both of these have a mild flavor. They're kind of more reminiscent to like lettuce, in my opinion. You're not gonna get a very strong spinach type flavor, but they don't taste bad either. They taste great and I can use them just like I would spinach in all of my favorite recipes. All right, so this next crop I recommend to everyone, especially if you're a beginner gardener because it's just so easy to grow. And that would be beans. They don't have very many pest or disease issues and they start producing harvestable beans in about two and a half months. If you're gonna ask me which two I recommend, as a bush bean, I recommend Harvester. This one just always produces very well for me year after year and the pods are really nice and straight. 
Or if you're looking for a pole or vining bean to grow vertically, then I recommend this Kentucky Blue. This is actually bred from two very, very popular green bean cultivars, the Blue Lake and the Kentucky Pole Bean. So it has the best characteristics of both of those varieties. And you could start direct sowing seeds for these beans right now. If you're new to growing beans or just want to learn some very specific growth tips, I do have a how to grow beans from seed all the way to harvest tutorial, which I will link below. It goes really into detail. So if you need help growing better beans, go check out that tutorial. My next crop is sweet corn because yes, you can definitely grow a crop of sweet corn and harvest it before winter comes. If you're in the Southern parts of the United States and zones eight and up. Right here is a small patch of some corn that I'm experimenting with. This is actually a Mayan white corn that is really used to make like tortillas and flour, stuff like that. But you can grow just any corn right now. It's very easy to direct sow seeds for corn, but if you have critters or bugs and stuff that like to dig out and eat up the corn seeds, then you can also start them in the 72 cell seed trays. I like to put one corn seed per little cell and grow them out for three weeks and then they're ready to be transplanted. They'll be like a perfect little plug size so it's very easy to pop those out and not disturb the root system because it stays nice and together when you grow them in those 72 cell seed trays. So I just popped mine in here. Make sure you fertilize them a lot. They love lots of nitrogen and water. The number one issue that I'm going to say with growing corn though, especially if you're in the south, is you're going to get the corn earworm and they're very tough worms compared to some of the other worms I get in my garden. So you must use spinosad. It's considered an organic treatment and I would not be able to grow corn here without it. That is how many worms I get here in my Florida garden. I do have a couple YouTube video tutorials all about growing corn. I will link those down below. Before we continue, if you're enjoying this video and are learning something new, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I post educational and inspiring videos about gardening, growing your own food, raising back your chickens, and keeping bees on a daily basis. So if that's something that you would like to learn more about, or even just hone in on your skills, make sure you subscribe to my channel. All right, so next up, we have camel meal. If you love to drink camel meal tea, then you need to grow this yourself. The stuff you get from the grocery store is so gross. It's so old. When you open the bags, it like disintegrates into dust like it came out of an unopened tomb for thousands of years. If you love camel meal tea, you'll be pleasantly surprised by just how much more aromatic. It has a much more stronger apple flavor and it just tastes way fresher than anything you could buy at the grocery store. Grow it yourself. You will love it. It doesn't like high heat situations. So I start sowing lots of seeds for this in 72 cell seed trays because I grow a lot of it but indoors because that high heat will kind of stunt its growth a little bit. In about two months, they'll be ready to be transplanted outdoors. So that will land me in October when it's much cooler outside. It'll thrive during my fall, winter, and spring. All right, guys, my next two recommendations have, have to do with supporting the monarch butterfly migration that comes along during the fall time. First up, you got to plant a lot of milkweed. Milkweed is a host plant for the monarch butterfly caterpillar. So you need to have a lot of this around if you want them to come into your garden, lay eggs, and hatch out tons of new butterflies. Now, I do recommend, if you can, go to your local nurseries and check what types of milkweed varieties that they have available because those are the ones that will grow best in your area. So that's kind of really important. There's lots of different kinds of milkweed. Some are better than others, depending where you're located. So go check out your local nurseries. But if you can't find some for some reason, or you just want to grow a lot of them, then I recommend starting your own from seeds because literally there's probably a hundred seeds in this little seed packet right here. It is recommended to cold stratify these seeds for a little bit because that simulates a winter dormancy and then the seeds know once they're taken out of that cold weather that it's time to germinate. So that kind of helps with germination. Put them in the fridge for at least four weeks before you decide to sow the seeds. But it's August, get started cold stratifying your seeds right now so you can plant them next month and hopefully start growing tons of milkweed in your garden just in time for those monarch butterflies. And the next crop is a bunch of flowers to support the mature adult monarch butterflies and lots of other butterflies in your garden. I have four different recommendations here because this is what I notice the butterflies gravitate to most in my garden. When you're looking for flowers that were great to attract butterflies and to add into a butterfly garden, what you're looking for are brightly colored flowers that have very large flat shapes. Some good examples of that include blanket flower, zinnias, Mexican sunflower, also called tithonia, and just sunflowers in general. Since it's fall time, I really like to grow the autumn beauty sunflowers because it's like a big mix of bronze, yellow, orange. So it's perfect for getting those fall colors into your garden. This is actually the uh, tithonia right behind me. And as you can see, these blooms are 
really, really big. If you guys have been following me for some time, you know I always, always recommend growing the Asian type cultivars of cucumbers especially if you're in a hot climate because they just do much better. They have a higher disease resistance and still produce even in high heat situations. But I also like to make pickles. So during fall, I transition to growing pickling type of cucumbers and a really great cultivar for that is this Wisconsin SMR 58. The SMR stands for scab and mosaic virus resistance. So it's a pretty good cultivar to grow, especially if you're in the South. Plus it's very productive, so I am growing tons of plants so I can make a lot of pickles. I can't imagine a fall garden without growing a ton of kale. If you're gonna ask me which is my favorite kale variety, I cannot recommend the Lacinato or Black Tuscan or dinosaur kale enough. This is by far the most heat tolerant kale variety I have ever grown in my garden. Plus it lives very, very long compared to the other kale varieties. So I usually start sowing seeds for these indoors only because anything in the brassicas family will get stunted in growth if they're exposed to temperatures above 85 degrees. So I am sowing these indoors right now in August. I will transplant them into my garden in October and then grow them and enjoy a nice long harvest through my fall, winter, and spring. Usually by the time March rolls around, all of the other kales start dying off because, well, it's just really, really hot outside. But this one survives. I have a plant of one of these that is now going on two years. Now it is the middle of summer right now and the plant looks like it's really struggling. The leaves are really small, it's not really growing, but I promise you as soon as temperatures start dropping, usually around the end of September, it starts putting on a lot of new growth. It even has side branches. So it has like a main stem of kale like all other kales do, but this one has a lot of side branches that start growing off from that main stem. So I'm a little perplexed by this variety, but I'm glad because it's super productive and it lives very long, even in hot conditions. If you're in the southern parts of the United States, zones eight and up, like California, all the way to the Atlantic coast, I'm in Florida, I highly recommend that anything you're growing to eat the leafy greens, like kale and lettuce, plant it in a spot that gets a lot of direct, bright morning sun, but that it gets afternoon shade. That will help these things live a lot longer in your gardens. All right, guys, so that's my top 10 favorite list of all of the crops that I grow every single fall. If you're looking for seeds, like I said, I have a bunch of them on my website, along with a lot of other unique or hard to find seeds and plants. I also have a live garden class. The theme is fall gardening. So if that's something that you would like to join in on, the next class will be live right here on YouTube, Sunday, August 13th at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure you turn on your notifications. That way you get alerted when I go live for that class. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. You have no idea how much that helps out my channel. Do you have any favorite crops that you absolutely have to grow every fall? Please let me know in the comments below. Like I said, I like to experiment with growing lots of different cultivars and new varieties every single season. So if you have any ideas for me, please comment below. Thank you for watching and happy gardening.